To be or not to be? That is the question. To be or not to be? That is the question. To be or not to be? That is the question. You may or may not be wondering what I'm talking about, but I do have a question for you guys. Who is Shakespeare? Have you heard of him? Well, he may just be the most famous writer in all of history. Have you heard the stories Othello, Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet? Well, these stories have been heard worldwide for over the last 400 years. Shakespeare was a creative, an inspiration, an out-of-the-box thinker, and to some people, even a madman. So let's start with the basics. Who was William Shakespeare? Well, William Shakespeare was somebody who's probably known as the best poet, the best playwright in the world. He's known internationally. 400 years after his birth, people are still throughout the world reading William Shakespeare, talking about him. And it's the way he wrote as well, because he wrote about the emotions, love, hate, jealousy, greed, all of those things that stood the test, test of time and they are still applicable today mm. in all walks of life. Mm. What do you think made his writing so wonderful? The beauty of his language is what I like. Yeah. The, the, the poetry of it. I think he had a, t a tremendous influence on the way the English language developed. I mean, somebody has worked out that he invented, or at least adapted, I mean, about 1,700 new words. If William Shakespeare was transported here to 2016, what would he think of us? I think he'd be absolutely amazed at his level of fame, because he wasn't really famous in his lifetime in the way that he is today. Well, I like to think, you know, if you imagine him, if he walked across Cl Clopton Bridge, he would be aware that that bridge is the same bridge that he walked across. And then he'd have looked across to his left, and he's seen a great big red brick building and he thought to himself, good Lord, that wasn't here. That wasn't here. And what's that name on it? The Royal Shakespeare Theatre. I've got the same. Oh, it must be plays. My plays being shown here. William Shakespeare was born here in Stratford-upon-Avon on April 23rd in the year 1564. He grew up here learning Latin in school. That is because in the 1500s, Latin was still a well-spoken language here in Europe. It is said that he took inspiration from some of the Roman tales that he learnt and he loved to perform and act even from a young age. Must have been in the blood. Growing up on a farm did not give him many chances to perform and act. So he did what so many people did and moved to the city of golden opportunity, London. In London he wrote plays for a theatre. But in 1593, the plague broke out and all the theatres had to close. So he started writing poetry, his famous ones being sonnets. But in the year 1594, he became part of a theatre group called Lord Chamberlain's Men. It was said that in this group, some of his most famous stories came to life. Shakespeare wrote of love and tragedy. One of his most famous stories was Romeo and Juliet, a tale of a man and a woman who meet and fall in love. But they are from rivaling families and they can never be together. When they find out, their love is too strong to keep them apart. Juliet is planned to wed someone who she does not love, so she devises a plan. Her plan is to drink a tonic that makes it seem like she has passed away. And this, she thinks, will trick her family. But things don't go to plan because she hasn't told Romeo what's going to happen. He finds her laid on the floor and thinks that she has died. So right then and there, he takes his own life. When Juliet wakes up, she sees Romeo there. Going on with life without him is too hard, so she also takes her own life. No one lives happily ever after. Now, that's not a very happy ending of the story, is it? That is what Shakespeare calls a tragedy. Most of his stories are along those themes. Love that just can never be. I'm here with my old mate, William. Let's talk about something a bit more upbeat than the last part. 
since this guy here, no one has even come close to his vivid visualization and desirable description. The way that he did that was through writing and speaking in similes and metaphors. Can any of you remember what those things are? A simile is a figure of speech when you compare something to something else using the words like or as. The girl's hair was as golden as pirate's treasure. Now a metaphor is a figure of speech when you say that something is something else. You are the light of my life. Now someone is not literally light, but they make the other person so happy that they feel as if they are light. Metaphors can be tricky. All right, we're going to have a go at writing some similes now ourselves. See if you can have a go at some of these. Just remember to compare the two things using like or as. Now, earlier I talked about a type of poetry called a sonnet. If anyone ever says the word sonnet, my mind automatically thinks of Shakespeare. When writing a sonnet, these are the things that you need to remember. A sonnet has one idea only. It has 14 lines. It must rhyme. There are four parts to it. The first three parts are four lines. This is called a quatrain. With each quatrain, every second line must rhyme. But one quatrain is not allowed to rhyme with another quatrain. The last part is only two lines, and this is called a couplet. And of course, they rhyme as well. You can find all of this in full on the resources for this week. Now, sonnets are not easy to write, but it feels so satisfying when you get those words to rhyme. So now it is your turn to write a sonnet. It would be a good place to start with writing about one of the seasons because we know so much about them. Teachers, in the resources for this week, there are scaffolds and planning sheets to add some extra help. Now I'm sure if you have some time, you can add some beautiful pictures to your magnificent poetry. And of course, please send some my way. I'd love to see what you create. Now it is my time to go, so I shall say some famous Shakespeare words. Parting is such sweet sorrow, so I shall say goodnight till it be morrow. Bye.